Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Upstate Miniman. Uh, today we're going to be working on Lannan's R53. Um, we did a head unit upgrade on the car already. Uh, switched over to Bluetooth uh, CD player. And the factory speakers, we have a non-Bose system. Uh, factory speakers actually sounded pretty good. But uh, it wouldn't, would not handle the wattage. Started cracking and popping uh, once you got over 28 on the volume. So today we're doing rear speakers in here. The speakers that we are putting in are going to be some kicker 6x9s. Uh, three ways on it. So big difference from we've already got one in. Huge magnet on there compared to your factory so much smaller magnet the bigger the magnet the more power it can handle this is a cardboard paper cone on here um, all the fluctuations from the different frequencies go through that cardboard where this has a polymer cone to it and then it's also running tweeters uh, so the tweeters create a clear, crisper sound on it. All right. So doing the kickers on there. So let's move my snack. And then we also have an adapter piece. I highly recommend getting this adapter piece. Uh, what this is, is this wire connects to your new speaker wires. Or your new speaker setup right there. So you connect those connections, and then, guess what this end is? That is your end for your factory wires. So you're not cutting and splicing and damaging your factory setup. You just plug it directly in there. So recommend doing that. Otherwise, you can cut and splice. And then uh, if you choose, I, I would say if you cut and splice, soldering is the best option. When you connect it to the speakers, solder it on there. Uh, otherwise, tie it on really good. There's nothing worse than doing a shoddy job and then it coming off and you're gonna have to redo it and take everything apart. All right, so we start out by removing the rubber door trim here. So, hold that. Double, the rubber door trim is super easy. All you're gonna do is just pull on it, okay? So it comes right off. So that's all I need to take off on it. I'm gonna use my plastic tool, body panel tool. Uh, the only reason why I'm really kind of using this is just kind of help give it grip. Use the plastic tools, body tools, so you're not scratching or damaging the plastic on here. So you don't end up with tool marks on it. When you get uh, on various different things, you'll get some pretty nasty tool marks. So I'm going to pry back here. All of this has, I'm pulling on it. I'm giving it a little pry just to help pop it out. It's going to make you nervous if you've never done this before, uh, pulling on the plastic. But I assure you, most of the time, <laughs> you'll be all right. Uh, there are times where you're not. You should be able to feel if that plastic is brittle. Um, majority of the Mini Coopers have good plastic. I wouldn't expect the plastic to start getting brittle unless it's on your dashboard and it's been sitting out in the sun its entire life and uh, give it another six, seven years and that plastic will start becoming really brittle. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna get it nice, just nice and secure on it. Give it a little snug. Our little snug tug right down here you gotta watch out for that lip there this is our remote I think this is our remote wire that we've got ran for the amp you can see we've already set up an amp the subwoofer was uh, we had a subwoofer in here um, it was it was a really good subwoofer but uh, somebody claims they listened to my instructions and never turned it up to a certain point in the break-in period and uh, fried the subwoofer 
Uh, so when you do do subwoofers and they tell you in the body shop or in the in the audio shop or whatever else, there's a break-in period, you need to have the break-in period. You need to keep the volume turned down and run those subs to that level. And then after that break-in period, you're going to be able to uh, uh, crank it up and really have some fun with it. If you don't do the break-in period, it's not going to loosen everything up. It's going to create too much friction and it'll fry the sub. And when it fries the sub, that means you've literally gotten the insides of that magnetic coil so hot that it starts to glow amber and it melts all that, all the coiling in together and then it stops moving. Um, so luckily we've got a replacement one that'll be on the way uh, and we'll, we'll be able to put that back in here and see. All right, so all I did was a quick snack. Ugh. Quick tug, snug tug, snug tug, tug, snug, uh, on uh, on the panel. And see all the clips that are on the panel. Just little little clips that clip in, clip into here. So those clips there, then they clip in right there. Oh, finger. Um, and then you got the speaker. That's it. There's your six by nine right there. We're running six by nines, right? Yeah. Okay, yep. So six by nines on your Gen 1. Uh, it's four seven millimeter sockets that do it on there. So we're going to click, uh, we're going to take that off and uh, and then we're going to swap it out for the new one. All right, uh, so I got those screws off here. Can you see it? So, oh, ta -da, ta -da. just fall right on out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's nasty. Some w well paneling to uh, deaden the sound from your in or from the road noise. Ugh. We got a little, somehow got a little bit of water up in there. All right, just wiggle it just a little bit. Comes right on off. So. Still a perfectly good speaker. It's not blown. You don't see any tears on it. The exertion on it is good. So you can see that little paper cone inside. So the exertion on it is good. So these are good speakers. We're going to give it, uh, we'll put it up on the website, uh, uh, on our mini site for free in case somebody has an older car with some blown speakers and they don't want to buy brand new speakers. So just donate it or give it up. Um, try to keep crap off your magnets if at all possible all right so this is going to be pretty much a direct fit onto it yes wiring first Uh, so there is a big one and a little one. Put the big one on the big one and the little one on the little one. You push it down, try to give it a little support. So it's just slides right on there. Voila. So good and snug on there. In. All right, shape like a T. So you can do that T connection on there. Hear the clip, it means it, cl it is clipped on. I'm using the factory screws in the factory holes. All right, I got it started, so it's hanging there. Get it started. Don't tighten it down all the way. You want to get the bolts in there. 
so you can get it lined up because it is a pain in the butt. I'm sure you could take this entire panel off and make it easier. But honestly, I don't think it's that necessary. Now, I did it on the last one, and I'm probably going to do it on this one. I don't think it lines up 100% accurate on it. Uh, so I got three of the four in there. Tighten it down. You're not going to... It's not going to make a difference on it. As long as you tighten it down good, uh, you're not going to notice a difference. If you're running hardcore subs and, and some hardcore stuff, you may hear the vibration. And you may just want to take the whole panel off and potentially tap a new hole for the screw. But uh, if you're just replacing your speakers or you want some decent sound out of it, three is going to do you just fine. Uh, so we'll get three of them on here. Watch out for the neon lights that we set up. Okay. There we go. Let's see if I can get the fourth one on this one. Maybe it was just the angle. isn't lining up on the hole so yep it's just not lining up on the hole so from here we're just going to tighten them down So make sure it's German, good and tight. <laughs> Fucking dad joke. Uh, oh, oh, the agony of moving around. <clears throat> All right, and that's it. Speakers are on. Now remember, we have to pick the panel back up over that lip. All I'm gonna do. Smack it back in. Bam. Solid back in. What do you got going on there? And then put your rubber down here is the best way. Start at the bottom. Roll it up on top. Maybe hit this a few more times. Yep. That's it. That's uh that is way super easy to do in a Gen 1 R53. Uh I assure you it's not as easy to do in a Gen 2 convertible for sure. Uh so ha Daniel, sorry dude. Um but uh we will show you that eventually cuz I know Daniel wants to replace his. Uh and then we'll jump on front speakers once we order in some more front speakers. Um, we'll let you know how the sound quality is as well.